This is a waterfront in the city of Pittsburgh on the Monongahela River in the town of Homestead. When I walk across the Homestead Grace Bridge, I can see that there is a tall hillside with trees blossoming into their October fall colors. Red, orange, and a dead-looking brown, yet some say green. As if to hold on to that warm summer feeling, they're ready to accept the passage of time to the cold autumn wind. This hillside overlooks Homestead, and the tall overwatch seemingly remains untouched. Except for the half a million dollar townhomes behind this hill, they were recently built. If a man were to sit here 200 years ago and watch below, what would he see? If he waits patiently and with anticipation, he would see the ground being dug up, the carrying of different groups of people into this space to live and thrive, the blood, sweat, and tears that make up the past history of Homestead. And cautiously, warns of the future of this town, the city, and the country. Six miles from Pittsburgh, and past the late-night drinking spots in Southside, is a place that recruits all of that, of new age designs and the rebirth of this steel town, Homestead, a city of about 3,000 on the Monongahela River, and the birthplace to the modern city. Birthing the city is from a certain metal, steel. The metal with a combination of iron ore, carbon, and coke. Homestead was the prime location for a steel factory because of its waterways and transportations and waste depository, railroad connections, and close proximity to the coal mines in the surrounding areas of western Pennsylvania. Soon a new manager bought the mill, Scottish Braveheart, Andrew Carnegie. He installed his Bessemer process in the steelworks, and steel was being churned faster and quicker than ever. It made him and the rest of the men in charge very, very wealthy. The bell of capital was ringing loud in Homestead. Work was plentiful, but suffering was plentiful too. The hard work in the mill was physically hard. Lifting pounds of machinery, working the extreme heat of the furnaces, would have any lightweight passing out. But the competition crept in, and to compete, Henry Clay Frick, Carnegie's business partner, decreased the workers' wages and made them work longer hours. So naturally, the workers went on strike, demanded better wages and working conditions. Frick basically told them to piss off, and he was going to hire replacements. The workers barricaded themselves in the steelworks entrance and intimidated anyone who came walking through, while the Algamated Association of Iron and Steel Workers sat with Frick's people to negotiate a workers' contract. But the Pinkerton agents came from the river here and walked into the barricade without where the homestead men were at, here, the pump house. Their emotions ran high and spilled over with the blood of men. The workers were shot, agents were shot, lots of men just trying to do good on the work. One account even claims that the workers lit a train car on fire, sent it down the tracks to burn the barges that the Pinkertons used. The agents underestimated the people homestead and inspired by them, more mobs of armed workers joined in on the homesteader strike. These workers came from surrounding Pittsburgh neighborhoods and steel mills to fight with their fellow union men. Fearing that their jobs would be next to suffer, outgunned, and unprepared for the war that ensnared the small mill town, the Pinkertons surrendered, waving a white flag to show that they were finished and defeated. They were escorted in exile out of the mill property being carried and dragged with rocks, being hurled at them with men and women, spitting on them, beating them. It all blew up at the pump house. So Governor Robert E. Patterson ordered the state militia to break up the protest. Workers, seeing how they could not win, disbanded. The strike failed, and unionization efforts were crushed. Many of the workers returned to the mill, sad and defeated. But when Carnegie and Frick passed through that big smoke stack in the sky, the Union successfully negotiated contracts with the steel mill management starting in the 1930s. Benefits, pensions, and good pay were common in 20th century Pittsburgh manufacturing. Homestead was a population of over 10,000 during this time. Kids played outside. Small businesses in Homestead flourished. Barbers, butchers, tailors, and teachers, they all lived a good life for themselves and their families. It was a great paradise. Baseball played in the streets, books on the library shelves, and the library that was donated by Carnegie so that the workers can educate themselves and their families so they too can own a business and become rich like him. Shows were scheduled in the theater hall that Carnegie donated so that even the workers can enjoy the performing arts, and which he loved so dearly. 
one of those striking workers dreamed of when they were sitting in the mud outside that mill that morning. So what's been happening to the area's overall economy ever since steel has left this area, starting in the 80s? Well, some say it's a hub for higher education, medicine, and 21st century technology. Some unskilled workers have now gotten jobs in the surrounding counties on an oil field, fracking for natural gas. When the mill left, it changed the behavior of homesteaders. Homestead is considered to be one of the most dangerous neighborhoods in Pittsburgh, and also in the whole Commonwealth. Crime is at 211% higher than the national average. Most of the crime being thefts, assaults, and robberies. Drug trafficking has also increased in this area. The drug of choice being heroin. <laughs> With no good paying jobs left in the town, drug dealing is where some of the residents have turned to. The drugs give that quick high, where you can escape the reality that life has permanently changed, and that the next paycheck won't pay the bills. Put food on the table for your family, for yourself. Or will pay for the next pack of cigarettes, which you cannot get enough of. The town police force couldn't and can't keep up with the crime after their police force was cut since the population dwindled and the tax base left the city. Some drug trafficking rings have been busted throughout the steel town by the FBI and the DEA. West Homestead, the borough that is next to Homestead, was so broke that in 2004, the mayor jokingly said that anyone who pays the town $1 million can rename the town to whatever they want. The waterfront is an open-air shopping mall covering the flat 256 acres. After the U.S. Steel shut down the mill for good in 1986, the site was vacant and abandoned until 1988, when the Park Corporation purchased the site from the U.S. Steel, in which was sold again to Continental Real Estate to develop the land into the colorful chain of retail shops, restaurants, and hotels we see today. One after another, stores selling things for inside the house, inside the kitchen, inside the home theater, inside the bedroom. The Courtyard Square, which back in the day would be the site for blasting furnaces, which would be melting the steel, is now home to what else but a Starbucks. A massive movie theater run by AMC dominates the landscape with its architecture. Sidewalks composed of bricks, a classic Pittsburgh site. The area was being developed, but the market was not for the residents of Homestead, West Homestead, or Munhall, but rather here, for the wealthy residents to cross the river in Squirrel Hill and Shadyside. The passage of events certainly changes the destiny of the people here. If walking along the brick sidewalks next to the perfume stores, show departments, and fudge bakeries, you see the money being exchanged, and total strangers talking about what product is a better deal. People walking outside absorb the sunshine over the mountains. They look at each other and they say, Where shall we go next? I'm hungry. Let's eat. In the same spot where proud men would walk out of the heat of the mill, lunch pills in hand, and pushing and jawing at each other from a hard day's work, and head towards the bar to take a well-deserved shot and have a glass of beer. The current of the changing economy has swept away with the blue collar and has died at white, replacing the old rust with something new and different. And yet, misguided in its attempt to be a foundation for pride and hard work, a foundation for unity, and a foundation for love. The feeling that the workers felt came through their hard labor, in which they knew it was something very important. It was something they could see driving across the bridges and the buildings that they see high above them. The foundation is now to send a person out with a thing that they probably don't even need, which will probably break soon, in which they will come driving back to find it yet again, only a little bit changed, since it is the newest and the best and the shiniest. The old sights of the mill are like the scars of a bad tattoo that was once erased. So what are the people here supposed to do is the ultimate question. Should they hope that the waterfront will bring more jobs? Should they reach in for the 21st century economy in technology and science? Or will a presidential candidate pass laws to bring back the steel mills from overseas? Homes is a visualization, the metaphor for the passing of time of this economy. The mill was swept away, and the waterfront took its place. And maybe soon, something else will take the waterfront's place too. Time is sort of a river, passing events, and strong is its current. No sooner is a thing brought to the site than it is swept away by, and another takes its place. And this too, 
will be swept away.